Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last series of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mokulover, in which we are continuing with our beautiful Italian Empire campaign. Now, the Triumvirate is gone, and we're pretty much alone in the world except for our colonies, but we must now choose a focus, in which I asked you guys yesterday whether we should do approve the Congress or shut down the Congress. Now, and then I asked you whether we do promises of reform, remind them of their duties, what happens in the PNF, stays in the PNF, or even a matter of national emergency. I'll put it like this, though. No matter which way you guys voted, I'm going to be upsetting some people with the choices. Uh, that being said, we have to make a choice. So overall, there's actually support for both sides, quite a bit of support. But there's a significant, or a moderate, I should say a moderate amount of support, or more support at the time of this recording for approving the Congress. So unfortunately, we're not going to go down, go down the shut down the Congress path, because there's a moderate amount more support for approving the Congress, as well as with going approving the Congress... There was a actually a lot of support for promises of reform. Lots and lots of support for full reform scores, though. Like, probably the most support I've seen out of all the questions I asked yesterday. But we're going to approve the Congress. Scar Carlos Scores of Duce of Fascism has released a statement to the press saying that the second Congress of Verona shall take place with a blessing and that he himself will attend it and take the floor to address the important themes discussed there. Attending the Congress means showing goodwill through or towards reformists within the PNF. Most of all, though, it demonstrates the willingness of the new Duce to listen to his own party rather than concentrate decisional power into his own hands. However, it's hard to predict how the Duce will actually deal with the PNF at the Congress. So I apologize if... That wasn't the route you guys wanted to go. It is what it is. And I actually waited pretty late into the day to get everyone's votes tallied in. So it is what it is. And then we can start doing some reforms. So that'd be kind of cool. Establishment points, reform points, hold down the monarchists. Ooh. Uh, someone did say that if we go down full reforms, we might be able to abolish the monarchy, maybe? We might be able to. Uh, someone recommends we try out Social Democrat Italy sometime. We'll see what happens. I, I don't know. Maybe. maybe. Sure, why not? So, Curse Sogno's Army Influence. Oh, okay. Yeah. Rally Young Black Shirts. All right. And we've got other stuff like normal. Good old normal stuff. And all this stuff too, but we don't we don't have the political power for that. So, it is October 4th, 1963. And it is just a little slow to move along. That's all right. Uh, what do we have over around here? Anything here? Oh, yes, please. And construction-wise, we're looking pretty darn good. So after proving the Congress, we shall go with promises of reform, as you guys said. Despite the victory in the Second World War, many fascists within the PNF started to feel that fascism failed to deliver what it had promised during its early days. Even worse, during the reign of Siano, the fascist flame was at risk of being snuffed out, perhaps once and for all. With a newfound predominance in the Mediterranean, we can now comprehensively reform Italian society according to the ideals and visions of the fascist revolution. By returning to the fascist ideology's roots, scores of promises a sweeping transformation both of the PNF and Italy itself. What of Siano? The biggest news of the day is the final result of the Verona trial against Galeazzo Siano. What was meant to be a showpiece trial against the former Duce to cement scores of control over Italy has turned into a massive fiasco when Siano and his lawyers successfully proved that most of the claims brought against him were bogus and fabricated by scores and his cronies. Siano was moving towards being acquitted, however, a certain piece of vital evidence proved once and for all he was guilty. All that remains now is his for sentencing, which ends up being, he's made a fool of us, fascist for the last time, imprisoned for life, the last laugh, or he's too dangerous to be kept in the country, exile him. Uh, prison for life. Let's see what that does. We lose stability, but we do get a little bit more political power, which is actually kind of nice. Ooh, we can do actually quite a few things. Nothing here yet because we have no more reform points. But, you know, if we actually have some stuff, we can continue funding the project and maybe we could actually do some of this stuff. Internacional Hydrocabori. Okay, so, high reserve discovered, further prospecting available in Algeria. Unknown reserves in Croatia, East Africa, Greece is developed with further developments available in Kuwait, Iraq, Libya, North Sudan, Oman, uh, Palestine, Persian Gulf. Well, if we already know that places have good stuff in certain regions, uh, maybe we should do Kuwait, improve Egypt. Not bad. Prospect in Greece? Well, further Algeria. Technically, this part of Algeria is our puppet, Giuseppe Castellano. Castellano. Oh, I'll see what happens. Uh, Sudan. Improve Tunisia. Tunisia. Let's see. Where are they? Tunisia. Gulf. Persian Gulf. Well, it's not on there. Ooh, you actually get more. Yeah. No matter where it is. That would be it. Finish off work in Kuwait. Three. Oh, you know what? Let's go with that one. 
I think that sounds very good. And the last law of the courts. This court finds you guilty of six counts of crimes against the personality of the state, three counts of anti-national activities, and one count of offenses against the public economy. Galez Oceano resigned to a hard wooden seat in the human courtroom. Could not have believe his ears. Just years ago, he was the Duce of Italy, the sole leader of the state, and now look at him being sentenced like a common criminal. Told he was a traitor, he, as well as his legal team, had valiantly put up a defense against the bogus claims of Scorza, using every trick in the book to get him acquitted, or at the very least, not killed. At last, such trickery would not save him. A sweat running down his brow, he readied himself for the final sentencing. As such, you are hereby sentenced to three counts of life imprisonment. Siena so remained silent. What was there to say? He had lost everything he had attempted to prove during his reign, the triumvirate, the party, Italy. It would all be erased. His achievements would be struck from the record one by one until only the memory of Siena would be of a failed tyrant. As two stern-faced policemen began to handcuff Siano, he began to laugh. The sounds of the courtroom rose broken, the chuckles of disposed Duce echoing throughout. Oh, how ridiculous this was, jerked forward, the daylight of the outside approached, his laughter only amplifying. Finally thrust into the bright light after what seemed like a lifetime, the laughter consumed him. He managed to let out one last shrill cry before he was stuffed into a black police cruiser, never to be seen again. And so mocks Siano's departure from the stage. And we've approved the Congress. Very good. At least Hellenic stage is relying on us, unlike everyone else. And promises of reform, despite the victory. Oh, did I read this? Uh, oh well, Mr. Hitler's dead. Bye, Hitler. Morris and uh, well, despite the victory of the Second World War, many fascists within the PNS started to feel that fascism failed to deliver what it promised during its early days. Even worse, during the reign of Siano, the fascist flame was, to, was at risk of being snuffed out, perhaps once and for all. With a newfound predominance in the Mediterranean, I'm pretty sure he read this, we can now comprehensively reform Italian society according to the ideals and visions of the fascist revolution. Maybe I didn't read this. But returning to the fascist ideology's roots, scores the promises of sweeping transformation of both Italy and the PFN itself. Yes, I have read this. So, that's very weird. My bad. I don't know, by the time I'm recording this, my mind is slipping. Like I, uh, like I told you guys, I am recording this late in the day, so... Let's look at Verona Conference. Across Italy, the new reels, news reels were putting out the word en masse. Every paper boy made more than enough change by the day. Duce scores and proclaimed the time had come to congratulate or congregate at Verona once again to finally decide just how to bring Italy back to the glory it so rightfully deserves already. Politicians and government officials are reaching the... Uh, day by plane, boat and rail much like they had done not so long ago. New teams, or news teams, are being sent and arrive long before any delegations do, and the whole of Italy sits in waiting to see in what way scores I shall lead them. Fascism. It's always been a fickle thing, and there's no doubt it needs defining. Fears have been gathering regarding exactly what will happen at the conference, as tensions are were so high in the last. But currently, attitudes are high and expectations are lofty. Scores will lead Italy to its predestined place as a hegemon of the Mediterranean, one way or another. Alla Vittoria. Ah, I love stability. Stability for the nation. Test our work. Well, why not? Minus 11 billion ain't bad. That national debt slowly going down. Got some other comments to go as well. Uh, let's see. So, as there was quite a bit of support for us to do full economic reforms. Oh, wow, look at Germany. Looks pretty bad over there. Um, there is... Someone did mention, though, do all the reforms, but don't choose the economic reforms. Because that could be very, very bad. And as you can see, the game is lagging so hard. Because Germany is... Well, they just fell apart. Cool. Good job, Germany. Keep it up. And... Uh, there we go. The German Civil War. And so it begins. Ah, bug end. Ah, the best time. I love October 1963, the Franco-Bunk-Undine War. The best of times, my friends. The best of times. Anything else here? No, just a little bit more lag? Yeah, whatever. Promises of reform, then. Now, there there wasn't any support for controllable reform, so we will go with back to San Sepulcro. If you'd like to read about controllable reforms, though, go right ahead. But back to San Sepulcro. Chaos and also no right divided. The very first fascist party in Italy was the Italian Fascisti of Combat, followed by Benito Mussolini on the 23rd of March 1919 at, Se at San Sepulcro Square in Milan. The new party was a wind of true revolutionary change in the midst of an Italy suffocated by liberalism and threatened by the communist specter. In that square, the first spark of fascist revolution shone. We must return to that spark, to that revolutionary fervor that burned in the hearts of World War I veterans, of revolutionary syndicalists, of nationalists, and of all those who wanted to see Italy and the Italian people achieve the greatness they deserved. Today marks the beginning of a new fascist revolution. For we shall return to that spark and turn it into a great, great flame. And as you can see, oh, 
Everything is falling apart, my friends. We can't even get reforms done because, well, we have a battle for Argen Ar not Argentina, but for Algeria. With the recent collapse of the triumvirate, the Algerian situation has just become much more severe and a topic of hot discussion in the Italian government rumors, sometimes based on factual reports, sometimes bordering on paranoia, seems to imply that Iberian troops are gathering in northern Africa, potentially preparing for defensive that might reach Tunis if unchecked. Oh no. As some important members of the Italian military, including Governor General Castellano, are already calling for mobilization, the Duce has ordered that the military action should only be taken as a last resort, a measure against Iberian Algeria. A crisis on the horizon, the rapidly changing situation in Algeria may very well spend, spell the end for peace in the western Mediterranean. If that is the case, we shall have our guys come over here. Oh, very good. Less than 27 billion? Not bad. Head on over, and let's see what we can do. Survey for a project? Don't mind if we do. Wow. I really don't... Oh, come on. Don't care too much for the German Civil War, because that just sparks so much lag. Oh, my good golly goodness. And I continue to do anything with the Navy, but uh, the Navy doesn't really matter in TNO too much. Only World War Three begins, and that's really only when it matters. So We are probably lacking quite a few things. Artillery pieces. Guns are looking really good, so we need... Artillery and anti-tank uh, tanks. Go to Battle for Algeria. Very good. And we can do one, two, and then some more artillery. So let's go one, two. And then anything else down here? Four is good enough for now. Improved battle tanks. Well, we can go down to... There you go. Cool. Next up, the reports from the sim. Aerial photographs, intercepted radio transmissions, decrypted messages, even reports from the Tarag... Nomadic clans, uh, Servizio, Informazioni, Militari is already hard at work in Algeria. While regular army units are preparing to intervene in the region, agents of the SIM are already active deep behind the border, gathering intel that will help us react to what the Iberians are up to. While the prospect of an all-out war remains unlikely, we shall be ready, or should be ready, for anything. Follow up quickly with, with we're running out of time. Look at all that lag. I mean, that's ridiculous. Absolutely bonkers. But, of course... Hello. We might be want to pay attention to that too. The intel gathered by the sim confirm what we come to fear. The Iberian Union is indeed gathering men and equipment in the Algerian region, mostly in the shape of armed settlers, militias, and other irregular troops. Now, a rift is open between the two different factions of the Italian government and military. Many believe that this is clearly the prologue of a large-scale offensive, as the Iberian settlers and the French allies are trying to seize the entire country for themselves. Governor General Castellano emerges an immediate reaction, potentially one that will be able to repel the Iberians from Algeria entirely. On the contrary, some argue that the Iberians are expecting an Italian offensive and thus are mobilizing to defend the country. Thus, a diplomatic resolution to the crisis is still possible. E and I representatives in the country are especially worried about the prospect of a war, which would immensely harm oil extraction operations in the region. And Austin has definitely fallen apart. Oh, so what's going on down here? So, basically, what's happening is that we're watching Serbia kill itself and we're on the sidelines saying yeah, kill each other, kill each other, kill each other. I love this. And guys are just doing push-ups as we're watching them die. I was going to say it's good to be Italian, but maybe it's not. <laughs> oh, I love it. manfire has gone down a little bit more. A South African war, African chaos. No vegan? Domino shall stop. Alright, Calperani, Castellano. This reminds me, this exact thing reminds me of um, the Iberian part when they have, when this happens too. Calperani? Let's see. So we could choose either one. Breathe the Xmas, Desert Rats, Offers They Can't Refuse. Ooh. Rev up the engines. Ooh. Max volunteer force divisions. I like that. Uh, call Parani. Call from Rome. Native diplomacy. A fistful of oil. It's not bad. Promises the freedom of peace. Extend the olive branch. Ooh. Oh, I want to be a reformist and go down and call Parani. But... Oh, I gotta call Castellano. I, I I want war. It's better to be safe than sorry, especially when the integrity of the Empire is at stake. The Duce has ordered Governor General Castellano and a select group of military advisors to draft up contingency plans in case of Iberian aggression. While we're not interested in escalating the hostilities into a full-blown war with Iberia, we should be able to not only repel any offensives coming from Iberian-backed militias, but also counterattack to ensure that Italy alone has control of Algeria, potentially to later cement as a nation in our sphere of influence. Oh, man. You know, even though we're trying to be really reformist, 
We're so fascist. But Rebrief the Xmas. While the Regia Marina fleets in the Western Mediterranean have been replaced or placed on high alert, it's rather clear that this won't be a conventional war. However, we possess a perfect weapon to dangerously or seriously disrupt Iberian operations in Algeria and the Western Mediterranean without escalating the conflict extensively or excessively. The elite naval, Navy frogman under Junio Valerio Borghese's command, the 10th MAS flotilla, will be instructed to carry out sabotage, infiltration, and disruption operations aimed at cutting the flow of supplies and men coming from Alberia into, into Algeria, or Algerian lands, as well as striking terror into our enemies with the raids coming from the seas. Oh, look at that. Look at that army speed. I like that. That's pretty good. Ah, uh, very good. And can we actually get involved? Are they actually killing each other? No, they're not. They're not killing each other yet. But very soon they will be. And then desert rats. Just like the Iberians, we to defend our Algerian territories, we largely rely on irregular soldiers. Ragtag groups of Turag scouts, Italian guerrillas, foreign mercenaries, and Italian settler militias are scattered around our territories, fighting for us and reaching where regular units of the Regio Esercito cannot. By dispatching experienced officers to these spread out units and outfitting them with modern APCs, IFBs, and other vehicles in large numbers, we can reorganize them into a decentralized but effective mechanized fighting force which will allow us to control the vast expanse of the Algerian territory much better than how we could manage using regular army units. Followed up with offers they can't refuse over the years, as the influx of Italian settlers in Algeria diminished, the military administration of the territory found itself more and more reliant on native pro-independence groups to shore up their control of the country, most notably the Front de Liberation Nationale. The deal was simple. Italy would simply allow self-governance in natives and put forward vague promises of independence for Algeria and yet another to be decided future. And in exchange, the FLN doesn't threaten Italian forces in the region. With a war on the horizon, we can entice the FLN to fight for us by doubling down on our past promises, which in the future we may or may not want to keep. So we'll see what happens. Wow, we got a lot of research done immediately. Three things, nice. Well, interceptors, don't mind if we do, even though I don't really use them. Strategic bombers, that seems kind of a waste, but we have them here, so we might as well use them, right? It is 63. Let's go and get some more base bleed. And we're, this is going to continue to escalate, 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 which is okay with me. Desert rats. Not killing each other yet, but Ascari del Cielo. The first Italian unit of paratroopers wasn't exactly Italian, that is to say. It was made up of native Libyans, organized by the governor of Libya, Italo Balbo, in the 30s. The Ascari del Cielo uh, were still, were and still are the pride of the Regia Aeronautics, or Aeronautica. And over the years, specifies as an elite unit for desert warfare operations and raids, we shall deploy the Ascari del, del Cielo in Algeria, and they shall be or will be our sharpest weapons in combating Iberian forces, striking behind enemy lines in commando operations to sabotage supply lines and the rear, ooh, before disappearing as specters among the dunes. I love attacking in the rears. Nova Polska, eh? How is Nova Polska? Do they, they don't have a unique focus tree. No, they don't. They don't even have a focus tree. Yeah, he looks very worried. You know, if I was him, I'd be very worried as well. <laughs> I would be very, very worried. Oh, good. Less than 26 billion? No mind if we do. Come on, guys. Kill each other. Kill each other. Kill each other. Maybe we should have done the, the, the other one first. But whatever. It is what it is. Rev up those engines. Algeria is a big place, and attempting to keep control of it without a prepared air force would be absolute madness. As final preparations before we begin our attack, Algerian airstrips will be improved and expanded with newly formed forward bases being set up to refuel and resupply planes. Our goal will be to cover the entirety of Algeria with our air force, allowing us to launch recon and air superiority missions. Being able to strike anywhere and any time from the sky will give us the edge we need to kick the Iberians out of Algeria. And who's winning here in Serbia? Uh, we don't really care for these people. And we don't care for these people either. Nice hat. Pretty nice hat, not gonna lie. And we're losing political power, 0.55 every single, single day. Uh, it is what it is, you know. After driving up the engines, what shall we do? We shall be doing Operation Jugurtha. By order of the Governor General Castellano, all the Italian forces present in Algeria, as well as auxiliary troops and militias from the FLN, will launch Operation Jugurtha in a scheduled time. The plan envisions a preemptive attack against Iberian positions in the region, catching them off guard with a decisive mechanized offensive backed by air raids and amphibious attacks by frogmen units. The objective of the operation is nothing less than to secure the entirety of Algeria within a short time period, at which point an attempt will be made to force the Iberian government to pronounce all claims of the controlling territory or controlling the country. The Roman eagle shall spread her wings over the mountains and deserts of Algeria once more. Oh, there they go. 
Can I send you volunteers immediately? Yes, we can. Oh, we can already send five. Wow, that's quite a few. All right, this sh if we do this correctly, which I might not, but I might. You never know. It might just go okay. I love a little conflict in the deserty area here. Ah, oh, I love it. So many planes can we send? Any planes? Yes, no, maybe so. The Algerian War? War it is then. Up to 36. That's not very much now, is it? Oh, you guys are doing hanging out. I don't remember having you guys here. Oh, you're, you're actually literally on the planes. Okay. Uh, okay, not bad. You guys have a good time in Northern Africa. Hopefully they don't have any fighters. That would be pretty bad for us. Uh, oh. Oh, we can go back to a reform. Finally. I mean, this we got destroyed. We can't even do this earlier. That sucks. Lots of reforms. Because that's what you guys overall wanted. Boost it up. We need more political power. Oh, my goodness. We need more political power. Military austerity. Uh, well, that's not bad. You know what? I don't want to hurt our ability to wage war. Actually, France still has Alger. I still need to play as free France. Oh, that, no, maybe not. French state's not looking good. <laughs> yeah, French state. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. That'd be like a one episode thing I would do. Okay, Alger, do you have any forces? 40,000 men. Oh my goodness, how do you not have any divisions? Come on, come on, get her guys there. Go, 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 go. They'll be there in four days. Oh, that is so not good. I mean, we're sending five divisions, which is great and all, but... God dang it. Equipment Endeavors. Bruno's rifles was jammed. The private had been stationed in the Algerian desert for several months now, but with the start of the war, he was finally starting to see some real action. His division's equipment had never been the best in the military governor, but for most of the usual conflicts he faced in Algeria, it sufficed. There had been a notable change, however, in the quantity and quality of the supplies he would get, since he would get since the beginning of the war. Bruno was lucky enough to receive a firearm made after World War II, but many others were not so lucky. They ventured off into the endless desert with nothing more than an ancient Carcano rifle and a few half-empty clips. Man, broken equipment, Bruno muttered. With the last tug on the slide, the gun simply refused to work. Defeated, he began to look for a new firearm among the Algerian wastes. Governor General Castellano had med read many such tales of equipment shortages in Italian Algeria's standing army in the last few days, receiving it reports of soldiers with faulty equipment, whole platoons left without communication tools as a basic radio, as basic as a radio, and ammo becoming as rare as the sights of anything other than the unwavering sand dunes of the Algerian desert was becoming a common occurrence. His previous pleas for weapons, armor, aircraft, anything at all, meant to help the warfare were met with nothing but vague promises of additional support from his Libyan superiors. That is, of course, if he wasn't outright ignored. He knew that this current situation was unsustainable. Every gun lost to the scorching desert sands was one he wouldn't be fighting against the advancing Iberian forces or repelling the ever-increasing bent hordes targeting his scant supply convoys. Appealing to the superiors just hadn't been working. He needed a new strategy, dialing a number of senior officials in the PNF. He was prepared to explain the situation and make yet another plea for supply. Suddenly, the phone line connected. What the heck are you doing, Castellano? The voice on the other end was, surprisingly, one of his superiors he especially disliked. You know that all communication to Roma had gone through us first. The Governor General had barely had time to start talking before the Libyan officials started again. Is this about that gosh darn supply issue again? Listen, the only answer I can give you is that we're working on it. Don't try to go around me, understand? Castellano could offer nothing more. Understood. This is going to be a long night. Ooh, boy, that sucks. And here we go. Greece erupted into insurrection. Democracy has failed once again this time in the place of its birth. The coalition of various rebel forces that overthrew our puppets in Athens has not been able to unite behind a strong leader and as such have predictably fallen into infighting chaos. When well, no one in Italy would have shed a tear for the gaggle of rebels and opportunists that have turned on each other, the situation is worrisome. Greece is a nation that, with, that is within the traditional Italian sphere of influence, who has also not only deprived the empire of another market and its resources, but also potentially destabilized its Balkan neighbors. It's clear that intervention is the only choice. Italy's prestige demands it, but high command is split on how to proceed. Until the situation solidifies, everyone agrees that a defensive posture is needed, and to this end, two plans have come to the fore. The first would be to establish what is referred to as the Sola Perimeter around the city of Athens. A precarious position is and difficult to hold, but our continued occupation of the city would prevent any of the rebels from gaining legitimacy by taking the capital. The second is a Salamis Perimeter, where we create a flexible and easily defended perimeter around a section of the Aegean Retreat, which we simply hold until the situation becomes more clear and we begin to make plans. Unfortunately, unfortunately we can only choose one, and ultimately, that final decision falls to the Duce. Uh, we'll also draw Italy farther from war with Greece, defend the Athens, and establish a perimeter. Well, to be frank with you guys, I'm not really sure. Um, I expect to go to war with you know, the Serbs, but not these guys. If that's the case, I mean, if we go to war with these folks, you know, so be it. Actually, that's probably too many guys on the front. I'll put you guys at the forefront. There you guys go. There you go. And there you go. That should be enough to get the Greeks. 
because we're still fascist, I want to go to war with this, these guys. But when I play as Democratic Italy, I'll probably be a lot more peaceful. So, All right, not bad. And... Oh, so do we like this person less or more? Or what's going on? Eh, despotists. Despotism. Oh, our guy showed up. Oh, that's good. That's good. New field marshal, maybe? Ah, he's got a lot of stats on him. I like that. So if we move fast enough, it won't really matter, right? And go, 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 go. Support weapons. Nice. Let's go ahead and grab some of this. More, oh, 20% more land out of deck is pretty good, I'd say. With the guys moving around, we should be able to do okay. We don't have an airbase around here, there. Ooh. Go, 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 go. If you'd like to, you go there, 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 there. That might be able to work, you know. Formulate a contingency plan with the situation rapidly deteriorating on the Greek Peninsula. Simply holding the line against a rising tide of chaos is only delaying the disaster. If Italy is to restore order to Greece and secure a sphere of influence, an offensive strategy will need to be formulated and agreed upon. One major wall that High Command has run into is whether or not we should recruit and involve collaborators from Greece in their operation. While this is a standard practice for Italian interventions in other regions, the fact of the matter is that every time the Italian Empire worked with Greek collaborators in the past, they got burnt for it. In fact, even the rebels we're planning against right now had former collaborator elements as part of the rebellion. A number of hardliners argue that the plan to restore order to Greece cannot involve Greeks, and that the presence will only subvert and compromise any attempt to keep the peninsula in check. There and there are those who are more of a reconciliatory mind, accepting that the Greeks have proven untrustworthy in the past, but arguing that the downsides to an Italian-only operation outweigh the problems that involving the locals on the campaign occupation would cause. Either way, Italy will face fierce opposition from an incensed and defiant Greek people, but this decision could make the difference between a stable, friendly Greece and a hostile, mutinous one. No one knows which path will lead where, though, and the Duce will need to make the final call. Let's see. If we aren't working alongside some familiar Greek faces, the people will only resist harder. We need the collaborators. The Greeks had their chance and they refused to behave. We will handle this in the Italian way and leave the Greeks out of it. Oh, man. Reforms for Greece. Or for reform, reforms for Italy, but... Uh, maybe I'll play as a hard line scores eventually, but... Hmm, hmm. We're still fascists, though. I mean, we might be reforming ourselves, but we're still fascists. I gotta go with that way. I just have to. All right, everyone. My apologies about that, but we still gotta go on and have a good time in Algeria. Oh boy, Algeria, Algeria, Algeria. Actually, you know what? Don't go in there yet. Go over here. Take out these guys first and see what happens. Uh, even though this part of Algeria has no divisions, that's all right. We'll do okay regardless. At least hopes, hopefully. Uh, head on in there and just do that then. The goal is to destroy... Oh, actually, just go right there. Oh, look at that. Promises of reform, which we did say we'll go to back to San Polcro. So if you'd like to read about this one again, I mean, we already read it, but go right ahead if you would like to. We lose a tiny bit of research speed, but we do get slightly more <laughs> fascisti uh, uh, support. I couldn't think of that word there. Actually, we're losing support right now. Oh, look at that. Reform streams. Not bad, not bad. I like that. I like that quite a bit. Civilian budget boots, of course. Advisor level 4. Oh, more authoritarian Demo Democrat support, huh? Interesting. Very nice. Uh, really, I should be attacking with the tanks, but whatever. There you go. You guys head down here and then go... Ah, go straight for the Oran. Issue an ultimatum. We have ships moving into position to the east and south of Athens, and boots on the ground are starting to gather on the Hellenic coast while the Royal Air Force dominates the sky above the turbulent peninsula. The rebellion has taken control of. It's going to take some time, but we will soon be ready to move against the rebels, but before we can do that, we ought to draft and deliver to them a list of demands. If we can avoid a fight, we should do so. Of course, it's easy to decide on the bulk of the demand. The standing Greek rebels will stand down, Italian forces will be allowed to reestablish control over the peninsula, and the formation of a new government under underneath Italian supervision, as well as all that all as well as good. But the question of an amnesty has proven to be difficult to come to an agreement on. Some argue that we need to take a hardline stance against the ring leaders and generals of the rebellion if we were to prevent the same thing from happening again or happening in other parts of the empire's sphere of influence. Others argue that an offer of amnesty would, should the leadership of the rebellion refuse, allow disillusioned and forward-thinking generals to effect safely and make the campaign that much easier. Several Greek leaders in particular, notable security battalion veterans and other former collaborators, have already expressed interest in laying down their weapons in exchange for guarantees from the Empire. One such leader has even suggested that he could negotiate or mediate negotiations between two sides. 
These statements only serve to both enrage the hardliners and simultaneously encourage the more lenient commanders. Um, amnesty will prevent a great deal of needless bloodshed and allow us to begin state building process more quickly. If they wanted mercy from the Empire, perhaps they should have considered that before taking up arms against us. I know I'm going to get blowback for this, but it is what it is. I want the conflict. And that'll show us that we do need reforms. That the Empire and her possessions do need reforms, my friends. That they do need them. And we shall have them. And I really want to finish this up as fast as possible. So that, uh, well... Go ahead and hold first. So we can be ready about Greece. Look at that. More supply grace, huh? Alright, not bad, not bad. Just hold there, hold there. Thank you very much, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Kill these guys off if you can. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Head on in there, and then head on over here as well. And circle those guys in orders at the Regina Marino. From the bowel of the Imperial, Athens looked much smaller than it had when it left it, when he left it. Then again, Admiral Luigi Mascherpa hadn't expected to ever return to the city. He only wished that it hadn't, he, it hadn't been in order to hold a gun to its head. The bay south of Athens was littered with the crews and cruisers and destroyers of the Regina Marina, as well as the occasional supply convoy making its way toward Hellas to supply the royal army present there for simple police action. The sight of it conjured long, buried memories of the sounds and smells of the World War. The Admiral peeled his eyes from the city into the man in charge of the operation, Admiral Antonio Lignani. A cruel and harsh leader by all accounts, but those traits were expected of a submarine captain no matter how high they rose afterwards. Even still, Nasherpa made his appeal. I strongly urge you to reconsider this, Admiral the <clears throat> Legnani. Interrupted, as often he did during these conversations, do you now? I must not have noticed the last hundred times you urged me, but now that is a uh, strong urging. His mouth twisted into a smocking smirk as he spoke. With an accused finger gestured at his fellow admiral, Nasherpa's voice rose. The Imperial is clearly visible from the city. The Hellenese see the guns, and they see the ships are points made. There's nothing to gain and much to lose by shelling the city. Leg Lagnani shook his head as his eyes turned towards Athens. What good is a threat if they don't believe we will follow through with it? I think your time among the Greeks has made you sentimental, admiral. This wasn't the first time that Leg Lagnani brought up Nasherpa's time as a high commissioner of Hellas, but that didn't stop him from taking the bait. It's not a sentiment, only practicality, he spat back. We'd only serve to embolden these rebels and drive more Hellas, Hellenists to join them. And this is simply a civil disagreement. We're here to punish the Greeks, not befriend them. He turned on his heels before Mesherpa could respond. Besides, it's too late. I've already requested permission from the Duce. Best hope that the Duce loves the Greeks as much as you do, my friend. Mesherpa could practically hear the condescending smile on his face as he walked away. We can hear, we're here to keep the peace and not rack up a body count. Let the presence of the guns speak for themselves, or open fire and let the Greeks know the cost of, defi the cost of a defiance. Well, the authoritarian de democracy, a uh, provisional national government, and they have a total of three divisions. And they're technically... Actually, who's under us? Got a couple puppets. Not bad, not bad. Uh, obviously, Greece is not one of them, but... They were in our sphere, so... It is what it is. And beautiful. And exactly what we wanted... Before we had to go to war with the Greeks. So be it. In row to 56, it says connected. So Crete is not connected to regular Greece? What? Oh, we didn't even have air support, too. Which kind of sucks, but whatever. Uh, head on over here. And have a good old time. Alrighty, tighty, come on over here, too. That would be great. And duplicate. Because you can. Orders to the Regia Aeronautica. Yes. And the spirit of the ancient bond between Rome and Hellas laid down your arms was written in bold Greek letters beneath a colorful drawing of two hands shaking, each of them showing the colors of the Italian and Greek flags, as gaudy and ostentatious a thing as Ernesto Balto had ever seen. Always with the ancients, he muttered as he pinched the bridge of his nose with his free hand, handing the flyer back to the other with the other. He shifted his weight onto his right leg, the sound of the iron prosthetic causing the floorboards beneath him to creak quietly. When did we turn from an air force to school teachers? I just thought they might be more receptive to the man from the Ministry of Popular Culture began to make his retort, but Balto was already walking away. We need to remind them of their hopeless position, paper man, called back Ernesto. Iron like Bato on his way out the door. Not a factoid. They have to try something worth its ink when I return, or else explosives may replace your papers. It wasn't a long walk from the offices to the armory, though to call either makes you a hastily erected frontline structure by their name felt severely inappropriate. Bato gave the doorless frame of the building a knock as he entered, seeing that there were no one to greet him, and he made himself at home instead. Bombs were lined up against the far wall of one of the few additions onto the building made out of concrete. Bombs that could... they that should they be needed, would blast Athens or rubble, but something seemed off about them. Upon closer inspection, the reason became obvious. Painted on each of the bombs was a seemingly personalized message. Stay in your caves on one. This one's for Godzamanas. Augustus is back, sat next to Prog 
uh, Piero Maglu. Oh, suck my wawa. Apparently, the pinnacle of wit and cleverness that you could expect out of the Italian bomber crews. Commander, I didn't hear you come in, piped up the quartermaster, scrambling up behind Bolto, only to follow his gaze and realize what Iron Leg was reading. His complexion began to whiten. him. I am curious, quartermaster, what exactly is the value in these writings? Insults to demoralize the Greeks when we bomb them, of course. And I see an... They're supposed to read these... when exactly? Balto turned his gaze back to the quartermaster, who had no response save to rub the back of his neck nervously. Just get the men back to work. We need to drop something, and if this isn't bombs, they may very... may... very... may... They may very well be papers instead. Man, when I choose something, I, 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 I sometimes choose it to be very, very aggressive, as you can tell. Sometimes. Back to San Sepulchro. Very good. And what's the next research done, actually? Uh, about a week. Oh, more artillery. I love it. How much artillery do we have now? Minus 300, but not bad orders to the Regio Asserto. Asercito. For the, for the time being, there's a small piece of Greece that belonged to Italy from the Italian-dominated waters of the Aegean march the boots of the Regio Asercito. Well, for now, they'd set up shop along the barren coast of the Aegean... Aegean retreat. The time for organization was ending, and the time for action was just beginning. It is be better, always better to act in reply. Two men marched along the coast. Two of the principal commanders of the upcoming battle named Operation Corinth, Enrico Martini and Tito Agosti. The two men could not be more different, and that was reflected in the argument that they currently had. Reacting is what you do when you are on the defensive, Martini. In case you haven't noticed, we are the invaders here. Agnosti, Agosti retorted, a finger pointed towards Martini's chin, and what more would a partisan love than to see a column of tanks roll right into the trap? Should we not hold and let the rebels show their hand? They will be no doubt eager to retake the lands we've occupied already. Agosti looked out in the Greek, looked out into the Greek in interior before gesturing broadly to the vague silhouette of Piraeus' harbor in the distance. Look at it. Piraeus sits there, right for the taking. It is near enough that we don't need to fear your terrifying partisan, and it will fall, and its fall will send a signal to the rest of the rebels. It's a foolish decision. There's no point in taking up Piraeus without having some idea of the ability of the Greeks to make a counteroffensive. We'll only be overextending ourselves. We could extend or overextend... We could extend ourselves along the whole of Greece if we should wish it. You underestimate your own men, Martini. I'd rather underestimate my own gun than my underestimate the gun pointed at me. Steady, steady, wait for it. Let them know what we've got in store for them. Do the, the Greeks ever go to war with the Italians? That's something I'm kind of interested in, actually. Alright, boys and girls, get ready. And we were using some dude down here. Wow, there's only a lot of generals. We got a lot of generals, wow. Well, let's go back out of the top. Um, cavalry leader, war hero, old guard. I'm not interested in old guards. Wow. Look at this guy. Mountaineer. Not bad. Enzo Marque Marquesa. Marquesi. Marquesi. Panzer leaders? Do we have any panzer leaders? Old guard. Oh, that's Agosti. Uh, I'm, I'm honestly not seeing a lot of panzer leaders. Siglieri. I'm not seeing any of them. So, let's just go ahead and choose... What is this? Harsh leader? I'll go with Harsh leader. Civil 5 attack. That's pretty darn good. And look at the, the Jewish folk uh, in Madagascar. I've won. Good job. Oh, no. Oh, never mind. They lost. Good job. Regardless. Wow, you got a massive forehead. I know I've said that before, but he's got a massive forehead. Wow. Ah, oh, there you are. Abba Kovner. Good luck, Abba. You're going to need it. All right. The Doctrine of Fascism. Uh, Spirit of Fiume. Um, honestly, there's at the time of this recording, there's actually equal support between going with the Spirit of Fiume and the Doctrine of Fascism. Like I said before, either one that I choose probably won't be great, but it seems like the Spirit of Fiume might give us a maxed out reformist because it's on the far left side, so we're going to try this one. Even before the March on Rome and the founding of the PNF, an event involving numerous soon-to-be fascists took place in what was then a territory outside of Italy. The glorious saga of Fiume, where poet warrior Gabriele de Annunzio has set up a state after taking the city by storm with the eventual goal of integrating the city into Italy. The Carnaro Regency de the Annunzio state was a masterwork of political engineering. Its constitution, the Charter of Car Carnaro, was the most forward-thinking and advanced set of laws that a nation could hope for at the time. Fayume is, is to us as a shining beacon, an example to follow, and we're the only ones who can realize the Annunzio's ideals in modern times. Five reform points. Well, this one gives us only one reform point, so... I mean, if you want to read about the Doctrine of Fascism, go right ahead. But... Back in Fiume, and we have better artillery. And now we get even better artillery. I love it. Very good. Come on. Oh, what are we doing? What are we doing? Um, fire current leader, constructing civilian factories. 
I'm a little surprised that we've got literally nothing about the German Civil War here. Then again, as there was a comment in the last video saying that, for some of for us here a little bit, it's a, you, Italy is a little bit boring to some people just because there's not a lot. The focus tree is okay. It's not fabulous. It's not great. Um, but it could use a little bit more polish. Where Italy will be getting rework in the future. So I can't say that. So, the root to the tree. Fascism has some of the earliest roots buried in the ways of San Sepulcroismo. Perhaps the original building blocks of Mussolini's fascismo, fascismo, constructed during the early 20s, while it may seem may be seen by some unenlightened members of the government as ludicrously out of date, Dulce scores has proclaimed that Italy shall look upon the original teachings of Mussolini to find guidance during such troubling times to wash away the detritus and corruption of decades of strength from the party baseline. The founding words of the fascisti italiani di combattimento shall be read over and revered as the teachings of Mussolini in their priest and uncorrupted form. Italy will, be, will return to the way it has always been meant to be, and through it be better. And yet, some still hate these actions, seeing them as running back around in a circle instead of moving forward. Only time can tell if fascism can still hold through. Sometimes old is better. Good. I guess we're becoming more fascist, I guess. He is slightly more fascist ever since. Oh! And we do go to war. Cool. Yes, spirit of Fiume. We want more reform points. Uh, value and leadership. Is there anything else we do here? Yeah, oh, no, that's pretty much it. So we have nine points, but no political power. Do I really not have to do a focus? Like, if we don't do a focus, that's the only way we get more political power. Like, That seems kind of backwards to me, but maybe that's just me. Athens. Please and thank you. What are the divisions? I oh, found them. Bippity boppity boopity. Patras will be ours. Asos. What is Asos? Uh, you guys go to Thessalonica. Culture is probably Greek. Yep. Ah, they wanted to stop us. No, no, no. Oh, what's going on? Did a Germany die? No. These guys have died. Hey, they're a puppet now. Look at that. Dysfunctional government. And they have elusive resistance. Wow, that's pretty bad. Uh, triumvirate garrisons. The security battalions. And, of course, the Cyprus emergency. Not bad. Um, well, we put them in their place. I guess it's time to go back to Serbia? Why not? I have all you guys train and probably move around with you guys a little bit more. Ooh. Antoine Pinay, elected president of France. Okay. I can't read that, but okay. Something about La France. And, oh, can we choose... Ooh, either LDJ, oh, no. Which one do we choose? Operation Jugurtha. Crisis on Syria, huh? Oh, it already happened before that. So, with this one, you get establishment points, but we want reform points, so... Ia, Ia, Alaya. As the crowds of fascist supporters cheer their Duce and Verona, it seems that the ghosts of the past have returned, wandering in the wind. Their names are spoken in admiration by the people, names that have started to fade away in history. Filippo Cordedoni, the revolutionary. Gabriel de Annunzio, the warrior poet. Filippo Tommaso Marianetti, the futurist, and many of the more of the earliest fascists whose vision was essential in shaping the movement. Once again, their voices are heard, and once again, a new generation of fascists seems to be ready to carry on their legacy. With scores at the helm, only time will tell they live up to this promise. You know what really sucks? We don't have enough political power. That's what really sucks. Survey for a project. Fund the project and fire the current leader. Survey for a project. Good. Fund the project. That's probably a good thing to do. Funding projects. Ooh, survey for a project. Sure, why not? Let's do it again. Alright, projects in progress. Oh, man. Back in Fiume. Fiume is regarded as a creative fascism, the first testing ground of such theories. Propagated by Gabriele di Annunzio, widely known as a John the Baptist of fascism, it's because of this, Scores has made a visit to the old city in which the Adriatic once sat. Showcasing to the Italian people the rich history of their nation has its ideology alone, uh, it has reinvigorated a sense of national pride among a certain percentage of them. Of course, though, some groups that would see Scores a fault... Uh, Fall detests as a poor propaganda effort that fell flat on the face, and with their words they carry support. Scores has decried this as an unwanted hate on the righteous path. He is bringing Italy on, yet it still brings up the question as to what he's really doing. Through our past, we may find our future. I get a civilian factory. Now that's worth it. Because at this point, my goal is elimination of the debt. And tester. I mean, I guess we test work. I, I don't know if that does anything, but. Sure, why not? Wait, what? Did we just fire the leader? Wait, I didn't click on that. Oh, crap. 
Oh, Paolo. Wait, do we already have this guy? Ettore Majorna on now? Alright, well. Oh, wait. Maybe it was wrong. Well, finishing the thing. Well, I guess I chose the wrong one. Well, a project is stagnated. God dang it, that's my fault. My apologies. I mean, ugh. I, I'm pretty sure I didn't click on it, but it's just the game was lagging so hard that there's nothing I could have done about it. Oh, well. Well, I guess that's that, this part of the focus tree. Cool. Cool. Very cool. And this is a little faster now, which is kind of nice. We're still training, especially these tanks need to train is quite a bit more. Even though we don't really have any extra tanks in reserve, which kind of sucks. Minus 0.55, so be it. Next research will be done hopefully soon enough. I mean, honestly, even at stagnation, it's not that bad. I mean, it's barely going up anyways. On to business, though. After a few months, Scores has finally worked out his council on the path he's designed for Italy. The administration will abandon and obey his every order and command it to win. With an obedient government, Scores has turned his eyes on the problem, strangling Italy at the moment. The shambles of an economy which barely crawls along, bruised and beaten by the horrors of the island tropa. The many social issues that plague the everyday lives of Italy's sons and daughters, women's rights, minority recognition, and much more. Domestic problems, political or not, divides which up tear apart of the very fabric of the Italian nation and consciousness. Italy's prominence on the world stage your empire and influence, and of course, the issue that is the European continent. The hungry wolf of Germany burying its teeth to her north, the reckless and delinquent Balkan Peninsula to her east, the treacherous and backstabbing allies challenging her dominance of the Mediterranean. Italy surely has many problems, but scores of shall see through them. See her through them, actually, of one way or another, and bring us to victory. You f ah, yes. Meet the new Duce. Oh, it's over here. Keeping Italy strong, more wars. Oh, that's okay. Get more stability. I like the stability. Death from above. Infantry, queen of the battlefield. Oh, I like my queens. More modern path. Prepare the youth. A more conservative path. Wow, that sounds interesting. No draft exemptions. Wow. Academic base goes way down. Well, 0.5 is not way, but still. 777, huh? Oh, boy. Advertise the black shirts. Advertise the army. Look to the SAF. Doesn't it have ban... Oh. Secretary's in uniform. Wait. Oh boy. Log logistics ladies. Oh my goodness. An exception for the Navy, huh? Death from above. A futurist air design. The bomber always gets through. More conservative. And infantry queen of the battlefield, of course. Our friends of the region arena. Ah, meet the new Duce. And bro, another tables have turned. In a historic turn of events, the Grand Council of Fascism has decided to vote a motion of no confidence, thus removing the former Duce Galezio Siano from his office. Now, Carlos Scorza, formerly the secretary of the PNF and now Duce of Fascism, has been accepted by the king as prime minister. A new age is about to begin, and the Italian people will come to know and love the new Duce. Scorza, like Mussolini often did, has embarked on a tour of the nation to speak before the masses and outline its goals and policies for the future. A noir. Noir, nui, I don't know, I am not Italian at all. Zero percent. But that's okay. Uh, pres uh, preteritum et virtutibus. Italy's past is held in its glory of Rome, a testament to the power that was once wielded over Europe as, an, as the whole of the world. And now Italy has forged for itself a new empire with new glory, yet this is not enough. Propaganda efforts have been made across the entire Italian domain to use classical Rome as an example to what Italy is today as well as something to strive toward. As Duce scores are put in an announcement earlier this week, Rome may be dead, but our legacy is eternal. Let's secure this legacy is ours once and for all. Comparisons have been drawn to every facet of uh, Italy's power projection. Infantry divisions marching through the sands of Africa, the two legions treading in the forest of Germania. Prowl battleships sailing throughout ro what remains of the Mediterranean to tri -remes. Doing battle with Carthage in general, the public have adorned these countries and re renewed interest has been found in Roman history and the well-being of Italy's empire as a whole. Truly, if Rome is not eternal in reality, then it will be in legacy. Roma Invicta. Nice. And you know what's going to help with building up Rome's legacy? Mole civilian factories. And nothing there? Nothing there? And that's totally okay. So, I think Borman was... Oh, we can actually do that. We have no... No reason to involve ourselves in Bormann's Germany's proxy war. I don't know if this is a proxy war, my friend. I I'm pretty sure this is not a proxy war, at least in my opinion, but I could be wrong about that. I think they're literally fighting for their lives, and Speer is doing not too bad. Bormann is very, very easy to play as in terms of the German Civil War, if you know how to set it up right. Hadrish is the absolute most difficult one. It's not impossible. It's actually very, very possible with Cutting Room Floor Patch F and probably later on. Goring I've yet to try at the time of this recording, as well as Speer, but I can imagine they're not too difficult compared to Hadrish. 
Ah, uh, less than 22 billion. Almost a little barely above 21 billion. Regardless, a fascist phoenix. Like the mythical bird from its ashes, the fascist spirit has resurged from the brink of oblivion after being threatened by Siano and his corrupt clique of plutocrats and phony liberals. Now the time has come to turn this new wave of ideological fervor into policy, and there's no better way to start than to address the numerous social woes and controversies arising or arising the PNF. The three major issues in this regard are the status of women within Italy and the party and the demands and needs of the younger generation and a relationship with... The church. Wow, that is rare. We get literally all four of our research slots available at one time. Wowzers. Uh, the big wow. All right, 60%. Uh, how are we doing on helicopters? We looking okay? We're looking good. Land auction. Let's finish off land auction as much and as fast as possible. More breakthrough? Yes, please. Well, at least we had, actually, a double conflict in this episode. I'm feeling pretty good. We went to war with the... Algerians down there. We went to war with the Greeks and had a great time. Ah, uh, meet the new Duce, the fascist phoenix. Yes, please. Yes, yes, yes. All right, hold on there. Uh, Rebase over there and go and train your butt off until you don't have to train anymore. Like you guys. There you go. How is Europe looking, actually? Or Europe, I mean Russia. Tonska's is looking nice and thick. Uh, the East is still a mess, and well, every everywhere else is pretty much a mess as well. Go figure. And after this one, the second sex. Huh. Uh, Gio Giovinezza. Oh, yes, absolutely. Among the Italian youth, many feel alienated and displeased by the ex ex excessive control of education and heavy handed censorship carried out by the fascist state over education. Another source of contention is increasing gerontocracy within the PNF, and as a generational exchange in the party, hierarchy tends to be slow. The spreading dissatisfaction among students and young men will continue to be a source of problems until we intervene to end the situation, and Brass is calling. From the general chaos of the former pact, a message from Brass has reached us. The Breton Republic informs us that they have broken free of German rule, and among their first tasks as a free nation, they have chosen to contact a number of leading world powers. The broadcasts are considered as mere declarations for, of independence for the international community, not as demands for the recognition of independence for Brittany. Despite the chaotic situation in Germany, it remains to be seen if the Bretons can hold on to their newfound freedom. Congratulations, I suppose? I suppose. Yeah, it doesn't make, doesn't make, really bad, make much sense. Like, of all nations in Europe, when Germany falls into civil war, it's either Italy or even Burgundy that can influence the German civil war already. Now, I don't know about Burgundy. I've yet to play as them. I was actually told, play every single nation first before we get to Burgundy. So if you want to watch someone play Burgundy, I probably would recommend someone like Taki Senpai or someone else. Um, just because I'm not touching Burgundy until I run out of nations, probably. So, probably. Don't hold me to that, but we'll see what happens. <sighs> Only minus 0.49. But, uh, yeah. Burgundy, I'm sure, has some way to influence the war down there. Or over here. But, to have... To have Italy. Oh, there goes Tricky Dick. Uh, not be able to do anything? I don't know, man. I mean, yeah, we're trying to reform ourselves, but... Still. Oh, the fascist phoenix. This one. I didn't even read this. And deal with the Vatican? I guess if we have to. Let's see. Listen to the youth. Respect your elder. Oh, academic base will begin to worsen. The female face of... Yeah, female face of fascism. 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 Well, we'll probably have to go with this one. Listen to the youth. Back in 1919 and 1922, the fascist revolution was carried out by the younger generations against a clique of crusty politicians and old plutocrats of the liberal state. If we forget that, the spirit of fascism will be completely lost and we risk returning or turning our ideology into a parody of itself. The young generations must be encouraged and invited to engage with the fascist state, and we must show openness towards them to make them feel like they're still carrying the torch that their fathers have lit. So, we're going to keep this open for now unless we get some other stuff done. Into the universities would not be bad. Even more reform points. Even more academic bases. Sogno's influence, huh? Encourage young fascists. Uh, academic base will also improve. This will boost no one within the party, but will gain us both one reformist and establishment point. Gains a new generation of young fascists. We get 10% more recruitable population for 10% for 500 days. Clamp down on protest. What hurt us? Let them breathe free. Okay. We're going to rapidly improve. More Sogno's influence. So we get free press instead of censored press, which we lose quite a bit of political power, which I don't like. Benevolent watch, okay. And then there's a reinforced censorship. I like state press. I kind of prefer state press, to be honest with you, but we can't go down that way. No country for old men. Allowed public meetings. God, they, all these, like, factors, all these, like, changes are literally just reformed from Victoria 2. And I know for that TNO was originally a Victoria 2 mod, but... God, I wish v TNO was... Victoria 2 had a TNO mob, but whatever. 
Okay, so here's a little bit of interaction between us and Speer. So he asks for weapons. With German Reich embroiled in a destructive civil war, each side is trying to get all the possible help to defeat their opponents. Emissaries from Albert Speer, who appear to be more moderate contender to the mantle of Führer, have approached us for help. They state their need for military equipment and promise to remember help in the future, which we answer. Yes. Absolutely. Get off my lawn. Huh. I was going to say get off my lap, but... Probably get off my lawn first. So you lose political power and more stability, or you get more political power and lose stability. Yeah, the way it's the future. The youth pacified. That's not bad. Deal with the Vatican. So a stranger to the church, which means, you know, kind of walk away from it a little bit more. Ooh, uh, a secular society. What does that give us? Apparently it gives us a new Mexican president. Uh, secular society. Uh, the state, of, state over church. Mutually beneficial agreements. Nothing really there either. All right. Oh, what do we have over here? Evaluating leadership, renovating land. Yeah, I'll, I'll fix this soon. Am I, uh, that completely my fault. Completely, one hundred percent my fault. Uh, Esercito favors Sogno. Marina favors Borghese. Oh, goodbye, President President Kennedy. Strongly favors Sogno. Borghese. Eh. Expendable points, huh? Beautiful. Anything over here? Nope. And listen to the youth. I guess we'll go straight into the university since there's not much else on this side. So Mussolini had a vision of Italian universities as a forward to the new ruling class. And for this reason, he reorganized the GUF or Gruppi Universitali Fascisti. They were meant to function as a link between the students and the PNF, educating promising young students and offering them a simple way to enter the PNF ranks. However, as a GUF, uh, proved to be rather difficult to control and somewhat inefficient. It uh, was eventually abandoned. Scarlo Scorza has decided to revamp and reorganize the GUF. Their main objective, once again, will be to provide a way to which Italian students can put their talent to work towards the good of the nation and, in the same time, feel rewarded doing so. What was yours is now mine. Well, that's not bad. You do get a civilian factory. All talk and no action. So, wait. Who's the performers in the party? All right. You get both one points. Reinforce the ties. All right, all right. Fascism is futurist. I don't know what futurist futurism is, really. So pluralism is secularism. Fascism is Christian. Huh. State religion. That's not bad. I kind of like the power of tradition. The church contained negotiations with Le Church. And we have about a week left. So we've looked at that side. Oh, a colonial aid. Unrest strikes Egypt. During another lavish party, King Farouk has died of a heart attack thanks to an exorbitant amount of meat that he has eaten during his reign. What? Meat is great. I love meat. While well, the death of Farouk is celebrated across Egypt, it has nonetheless been a catalyst for even more widespread disorder than during his reign. Thus, the new government of Egypt has inquired Italy to, for aid and to help stabilize the country. Currently, the Italian government is, has a number of options available in helping Egypt. Firstly, Italy can send Egypt some economic aid, making sure that Egypt has the money necessary to enact some stopgap measures. While this won't do much to improve the situation in Egypt, it will be easy to sever ties with Egypt should things get out of hand. Secondly, an Italian military force can be sent to Egypt. This force will, be, will help in keeping the order in the most important parts of the kingdom while the Egyptian government focuses on getting on rebuilding. However, it will be difficult to recall these troops if things get awry. Thirdly, we could fully commit to stabilizing Egypt, seeing economic and military aid. While this will greatly help the Egyptian government and stabilize the country, it will basically be impossible to get out of the dodge if the country somehow spirals out of control. Of course, the last option is if do you do nothing at all. We basically will be banning, banning our colony, but if the unrest right now is a sign of things to come, then getting the heck out of Dodge would maybe even be preferable. Now that the options lay on the table, it is time to make a decision. The Italian government eventually decides to send them economic support. I, I, I want to help. I, want, I don't want to lose them. I don't want to lose them. Establishment. Female faces. Promote gender equality. Uh, let's see, we lose 2% political power. Promotion of gender equality, women in the workforce with gender equality, lose monthly population, you get more recruitable population factor, you lose stability, but you do get more output. Huh. Or work out gender, which there's, you know, oh, actually, gender equality, replace women in the workforce. Oh, wait, so you get both. Work out gender, promote gender equality, listen to the youth, and appeal to tradition. With traditional roles, so it's kind of the opposite, and actually your academic base and industrial expertise get worse, but you get 2% more monthly population. I gotta play a Scorza again, like, twice. Okay, so, like, the one really reformist, and one that's, like, really hardline. Survey for our project, that's good, and my, that was my fault. Alright, and we should get the event soon. So, what you get thing? The optimizer. <sighs> Perfectionist, political mastermind. I don't know which one to choose. We've done this guy, and he's okay, or the optimizer? So, we did Paolo Mochi, which will do nothing. 
the political mastermind, efficient worker. Well, I'm I'm just going with that guy again. Who pro <sighs> program efficiency? I don't know. This seems like a big old mess. So, but like I said, Italy is going to get a rework, and the people and the devs will look into it a lot more. So, uh, we got 21 days left, which which would be good. Remember Fayuma. All right, let them breathe fine, of course, as well. Well, we could easily clamp down on the students. That is not the only option. Uh, instead, we can let them discuss their petty issues with fascism without fear of reprisal. Of course, we must, must, must make sure that they do not advocate for a revolution or something silly like that. But the students of Italy will have the right to speak their minds. Even more reformist points. I would love reformist points, but I can't do anything without political power. Create the SAF. More reformist points banned from service, non-combat only, lose stability, war support, and lose even more stability. That's a lot of war support loss. More recruitable population factor. Compromise solution. Huh. Or back to the kitchen. <laughs> uh, traditional roles, alright. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Oh, oh, oh crap, that's the wrong one. Oh crap, well, whatever. I didn't want political power anyways, apparently. Go figure. Uh, Goring is doing a pretty good job, I'd say, so far. I keep pressing the wrong things. My bad. I mean, I, what am I doing in this episode? I'm going crazy or nuts. Oof. Yes, here's our political power. I didn't want political power anyways, apparently. Ooh, can we do... What, what can we do here? Fund the project? Yes, absolutely. Oh, 30%. Okay, that's getting... That's a little better. That's a little better. Okay, I don't want to see that, so there you go. Ah, good. We got some of this. Oh, we got all four done. Great. Again. Yes, yes, yes. Some breakthrough. You don't mind if we do. Followed up with... Um, so basically that means our land doctrine is done, which is awesome. Let's go finish our air doctrine as well. So do we want tactical bomber stuff or tactical bomber stuff? I'm not using tactical bombers to use strategic bombing, so we'll go with that type of tactical bomber stuff. And let's see. Interception is not bad. Or air superiority and ground support. I would like to use helicopters eventually, so... Very good. And then, so we got boom, boom. We gotta get more boom, booms. Boom, 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 boom. Hey, boo, boo. Oh. Well, at least as a consolation with me doing or cutting civilian spending. Oh, no, the Eagles, he was even before uh, Hadrish. At least we do get some, or lower the budget. The deficit. The German Civil War has been raging and Germany proper is inflamed. All but Speer, famous for his reformist rhetoric and base of popularity, largely being with the student movement that has recently cropped up at the Reich, has requested that we send him and his forces help in the form of volunteers and caches of weapons. If we were to help him, it would increase his chances of winning the Civil War. The question, however, is if we wish to aid any faction within the Civil War whatsoever. While Speer is a reformist, there is a possibility that he will remain unfriendly to our regime and the political leg work necessary to help him would be all for naught. But we must make the decision now. Um... Well, I don't think that would be a good idea, as Schwer is no longer there. Let them breathe. No country for old men. I have slightly more political power, but not much more. Italy is not always a country ruled by ancient figures that are days away from death. In fact, Italy is a country where the students will be leaders of not counterculture, but of a fascist ideal. Time marches forward, and to ignore the young is to doom us to failure. So the new fascist woman. Fascist women? Sign me up. What? Gender equality. Wait, you already had gender equality, though, huh? Or a traditional society. A traditional society and a modern housewife. Sign me up. No more gender wars. Gender wars. Sex wars. That sounds kind of crazy. Um, what is it? It's back to Rome. Oh, there's stuff down here, too. Oh, crap. I need to do this one, too. I'm more focused on students and women. <clears throat> Rationalize the bureaucracy. Strengthen the bureaucracy. Add conservative economy. God dang, there's so much down here. Oh, oh, hello. Oh, my. Holy bad words. Why is it all the way down here? Fascism is a method. Oh, well, crap. There's so much to do. Oh, more political power gain. OVRA. Daily political power gain. Mobilization speed disability. I don't mind getting that political power stuff. Oh, my gosh. Burdens of an empire. A fascist empire. Uh, Italy's destiny. Ooh, that's really good. You get weekly stability. Holy cow. That's really strong. Power justifies itself. Eh, that's okay. Alright, so we'll do No Country for Old Men. Oh my gosh. Is this 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 must be like the entire focus tree here or something. I kinda do like it where TNO like 
it doesn't seem like you have that much of a focus tree to do. Oh my goodness, more debates. Um, but I kind of like it when you don't you can't see everything at one time. The old guard, or the old guard, always new school. Imperial integration. Imperial committee. Oh my goodness. Well, kind of saw that one with Hadris leaving. Um, holy cow. The Rome Pact. We create our own faction? An effective committee. Ooh. Oh my goodness, there's too much for me to choose. Is there a Kapathi monk? I, I saw Rocketry monk. Oh my goodness. We can't do this one. Herman Goring is... Oh, we do... Goring is fair. Oh boy. Uh, fascism is a method? That seems pretty good. I would like the tentacles. Tentacles, please? Yes, please, tentacles. Fascism is a method, though. Did you know that? Fascism is, fascism is more than just a means of governing a state. It's the triumphant will of the people. The strong hand of the wise to guide all of Italy to a grand future, to a stronger future. For far too long, the Partito Nazionale Fascista has teetered on the rope, unsure of their destiny, their goal. The powers at bay let fascism slide into de decay, into rot, and perhaps even most egregiously, they've allowed for fascism to stray from the very, very core foundations of our nation. With the sudden rise of Scorzo, however, this shall be no longer. We shall finally perfect fascism to be the best, most truthful form of itself. The various elements which make up our intricate political scene shall be bent to the Duce's will, and the inefficiencies of the past shall be culled to make way for the raw strength of the state. And that does the state. Back to 1919. Okay, Olympic Games, thank you. Oh, the party of the past, party of the 1919. Oh, get more political power. Oh, I'm more civilian. Oh, my goodness. No, no, the fat man won. Oh. The fa- Oh, no, 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 that is- Oh, don't tell me he's gonna come- Oh, um, uh, you know, I love Battle Royale Serbia and all, but, hmm. It was all fun and games until the fat man won. I kind of do hope he goes to war with me. Or technically, why are you screaming? Let's do it like that, there you go, it's a little better. I got a lot of panzers over there. Too bad we got panzers as well. Thick Italian vehicles made by Fiat of the ways of the future, though. The youth of the nation will inv inevitably rise to lead it. And with they come, their ideas, the old guard cannot stay in power for eternity, and succession must be aligned before it all is too late. The youth of the party may hold many thoughts on how to better fascism to fit the modern reality, and as a whole, ready Italy for the challenges ahead of her. Theirs is a noble cause, and one we have ignored for too long. Old and tired leaders shall be replaced by those more keen and fit. The mind of today will rise, or will power the engines which will drive forward administration and keep things on track. Failing theories will be buried in, in their place. People prepared for the modern day. The legacy of the past must be kept sacred and remembered, but decrepit fossils cannot manage a young state. Out with the old and in with the young we get a whole zero political power. Oh boy, during intervention, is this the end of peace as we know it? Oh no no. I would have preferred Borman, I'll be honest. Well, I would have preferred Borman. Other people, maybe not so much, but the, the magic of the party, I, I gotta get... Oh, actually, oh, that's... Oh, uh, um, we lose point two political power Oh, you do get more... Uh, I want to do that, but... Um, Reinforcing autarky. Oh, oh, there's so much here. All hands on deck. Inform trade unions. Institute workplace democracy. Oh no, the youth pacified. I mean, we can wait to do that. Back to Rome would be kind of nice. And this stuff was nice and all, but it doesn't seem like it's super, super necessary. So, it's not yet. Back to 1939. I kind of like that one. Oh, I like this one too. Ooh, anything here? Acceptance of fascist diplomacy. Controlled opposition to one-party state. I like that one. Tentacles, well... So we'll do this one. We'll go to the matters of the party. Yeah. So the Partito Nacional Fascista has long been stuck in the past, unwilling to understand what the world has changed and clinging to the Felicia the fallacious, faulty, and outright false notions of both fascism and the world at large. They act as one of the weak links of the state, driving the nation backwards into decline and degeneracy, harming the potential strength of the Duce, and by extension, Italia. This hollow shell of a party must be given a new purpose, a purpose which shall give it the direction and leadership it sorely lacked in the disastrous reign of Siano. Scorzo shall realign the party, disregarding or discarding all those which stand in the way of the true form of fascism, so that they may once again serve nothing but the Duce in Italy alone. Wow. Almost minus point one a day. Jesus, holy cow. I guess better test will work, though. Slash, slash. Oh, look at that! Oh no, 
The Jewish state won. Oh, I'm so sorry. What's going to happen to you? <laughs> the other partisans, sooner than later, declares war on Central European Council. A tree falls, and then there was none to hear it. Oh, my goodness. Well, good luck. It was nice not knowing you, Colvener. Nice. Not bad. Back to the little party. In which we shall immediately go with... Back to 1919. Italy must adapt to the ever-changing old uh, other world, and that answer the answer to our woes is certainly not to revert all the ills of the past. The ideals of direct control overall and the totality of singular rulership are notions of the past, myths which have dearly harmed the potential strength and power of the Italian Empire. We must return to Italy of 1919. Reform, self-autonomy, and perhaps even hints of democracy are necessary for Italy to survive the stress of the unknown tomorrow. However, it's important that we retain the core of what the heroic actions of Mussolini have awarded us. Failing that leads to nothing but degeneracy and failure of the very existence of our nation, but instead we must charge forward by not clinging to what used to be, but allowing ourselves to use the past to forge a stronger future. Wow, that was a really fast South African war. What happened down there? After that one, I do want to read the next one immediately. Federalize this place. Ooh, that's not bad. I kind of like that. Autonomy is not bad either. Rely on Gracia? Oh, no, 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 no. The tentacles. I like tentacles. Uh, the Organizzazione per la Vigilanza e la Representazione del Antifascismo is one of fascism's most enduring institutions. Founded in 1927 as a secret police that answered only to El Duce and was granted sweeping powers over the populace, it defended the soon-to-be empire from all manner of anti-fascist subver subversives and directly inspired Germany's Gestapo over the past few decades. As the Kingdom of Italy transformed itself into a true empire, the OVRA has grown alongside it. Uh, continuing to closely monitor the Italian populace for signs of dissent, however, some are questioning Overa's effectiveness in defending the fascist revolution, and it is up to Duce's scores to decide how to address these complaints. Good. 30%, huh? So be it. So be it. So, what happens um, with Italy? Or, not Italy. Egypt. Colonial government, of course. A Muslim Brotherhood. We have QUTB. We'll okay, then. Farouk's hedonism. Well, he's dead now. The Arab Socialist Union. Okay, back in 1919. And anti tank stuff. Good. I love tentacles, like I said before. Uh, and maybe we'll do some uh, economic reforms up to this one, maybe. Two more done. Beautiful. Alright, 64. We can grab some of this, as well as grab some of this. Yay. Money-wise, we're looking okay. Less than 13 billion of national debt. Not bad. And then we're just going to juice up our GDP as much as possible. So after we have a little tentacle action, what are we going to do after that? Any way I can get even more political power? I, I want more political power. I, I mean, I do want to do the economy, but... More PP is makes me happy. Uh, reinforce the repression. I kind of like repression. Reorganize the CPC is okay. Reform the OVRA. We lose st weekly stability. Holy no goodness. Tomsk unifies. Oh, look at that. Tomsk, good job. Well, Russia will be rebuilt from the ground up. Oh, we get more political power there. An efficient OVRA. Cleaning up the archives. A fearsome group. Um, I don't want to lose weekly stability. That seems really bad, so... Uh, I guess we do this one. El Imperio Colpece Ancora. The Italian Empire is vast and buried, holding it as it does, the entire Mediterranean sphere within its grasp. Yes, from the Alpine Mountains to beaches of the Gulf Coast, the dreams of an Italian rule power has finally been recognized following our victory in the Second World War. And yet, there is still something wrong with this picture, something incomplete. For f while we have... We may have gained positions of most of the Middle East and Eastern Africa along with the Balkans. One cannot help but remember the glory of the past. The Roman Empire had all that we do now that we now do far more. Of course, the world has changed drastically in the preceding centuries, and it would be impossible to fully return ourselves to such a state, but with the waning of the German Goliath that held us in check, we have a chance to push our influence once more. And here we are, everyone, on February 1st, 1965, and actually, uh, we have finished our focus, of course, but LBJ will now be leader of the United States of America. If you're interested, so we could use this stuff, the Legacy of Domitian... Uh, of course, Romania, or even France, but... Well, that's getting all this negative... Oh! Well, basically, we still get negative political power because we're not doing a focus right now. <clears throat> because of that, well, I think it's best to wait it before we do stuff here, so... It's just probably best to wait. Uh, reform. I don't want to lose stability. <sighs> that's not very good for us. Clean up the archives. Invest in modernization. A new spaghetti special. 
Uh, follow the money. Mm, corruption. Yeah. Oh, what is this? That's a lot of words. And you finish losing stability. Which, uh, I don't know. Total control looks pretty good, but... The burdens of an empire. I don't want to lose any more political power, though. But you g get rid of that very soon. Got political absolutes. First among equals. Re review citizens, uh, citizenship rights. Enforce equality. Man, you just lose so much political power. Marching under the black flag. It's just not worth it going down these routes, really. Not too much, no. Well, let's see if we can do something about all hands on deck. With the state's political security well in hand for the time being, we can finally turn our attention to secondary matters. Uh, such as that of the economy. To say that our predecessors left us in an enviable position would be an understatement. Two lifetimes of uneven, disjointed, and self-contradictory economic policy have led to an Italy that has not only achieved its full potential, but seems farther away than, from doing so than ever. There are many options and directions that we can steer the nation, some of which are far more drastic than others, and Il Duce doesn't seem to hold any strong bias towards any of them going into the project. It's going to be up to his advisors to convince him that their personal ref preferred method is the best path for Italia. Whichever way we may go, Italy will blaze their own trail from here on out. That much Duce Scorza will insist on. No, no. So my goal is even if we... So apparently if you go down the full reform stuff, you, you get rid of taxation, which obviously is not good for putting down debt. So, you know, even if that does happen, my goal is to get rid of all the debt before, you know, anything happens. Because if we can't tax, then we can't make money. We can't cut down the debt, so... And we got about roughly a month left for the, for the next one. Ooh, national, na rationalize the bureaucracy. I have to do that, though, because we get reformist stuff. Strengthen the bureaucracy. We don't care about the establishment. Uh, rationalize it. Bureaucrats get something of a bad reputation in this day and age. It's not entirely to say it's unearned. You need to be the kind of person who would be a bureaucrat to end up being a bureaucrat, after all. We should not dismiss the Italian bureaucracy entirely, though. While there may be a quagmire of red tape and protocols to trudge through whatever you want to get something done, that's the fault of our predecessors, not the bureaucrats themselves. When it comes down right to it, they do not make the rules. What we need to do is figure out what, where precisely the snaps and bottlenecks in our bureaucracy are and attack them. As the regime is still new and under firmly entrenched, we can expect a little pushback from the bureaucrats themselves if we were to remove or redefine some regulations to allow for some flexibility. Bureaucracy should never be an unnecessary way on its state, but a means by which the state can execute its will in a reasonable and timely manner. And pieces to pick up. Uh, Ciano's uh, administration had many blatant and evidence failings, or evident failings, but perhaps one of his greatest lies within the catastrophe that was his economic management failing to rise up. To the horrors of Atlantropa, Italy was plunged into a recession by his refusal to take action, of course. This was ju just what Scorza would like his people to believe. In reality, the economy began to stabilize shortly before the end of Siano's tenure, but it is still in shambles. Duce Scorza has drawn up a plan to pick up the pieces left over by the previous administration, but it still needs further review and further agreement before it is to be put in place. A meeting will be convened just between the biggest wigs of the economy to decide just how to push Italy forward on the inevitably rocky road of Hedderford. The market is a funny world. Look at that. 8.75 a month. God dang. We already have secondary schooling. And we get tertiary schooling would be nice. And academic golden age? Not bad. After that, reform the trade unions. Ooh. Oh, but look at that. You do get somewhat industrial expertise monthly change. Uh, and you actually lose industrial expertise monthly change. Ooh. Illegal trade unions. Introduce workplace economy. Allow independent parties... Organic democracy. That's three research. Three reform points. Ooh, independent parties. Three reform points. Move towards socialization. Strengthen the IRI, of course, and keep the status quo. Or an economy for prosperity. An economy for ethics. An economy of labor. Oh boy. Oh boy. I don't know, man. Reinforcing autarky. Uh huh. The new charter of labor. What the country needs. Hmm. Deal with the Vatican. Keep Italia strong. Well, let's try that one. A strong nation deserves a strong army, and Italy's nothing if not a strong nation. After almost 10 years of Siano's weak rule, now we need to properly reform our armed forces into a functional extension of our great nation. No longer shall we be bullied by our own allies in Iberia and Turkey, if we still have them as allies. We shall leave nothing untouched, the Regio Assorcito, the Regia Marina, and of course, the uh, Regia Aeronautica. All armed forces shall receive everything they need to dominate land, sea, and air. After our forms are finished, even the Reich will fear us. Which hopefully they will. Hopefully. 
Our current population is about 63 million. We only have 70 million people in our country. 70, about 72, 73 ish million. That ain't a lot, but, you know, I guess it is what it is. And we should have this one done soon, hopefully. We're not yet. Okay. Strengthen the bureaucracy. How many more days? We have about one day's left. One day's. A whole day's. I don't know. The heroes of fascism. Shifting peach. Pieces. The Italian bureaucracy is one mired in sluggish process. There's limited decisions and all too blatant incompetence. It's no wonder the Italian economy runs at a pace so terribly slow. The men running it likely had their education in the 19th century. These old men will finally be put to the retirement and new, young, and ambitious bureaucrats brought in to fill their seats. Not only the economic echelons will be receiving such swapping either. Bureaus of information, police, and administration will also receive some light overhauls to push for better new Italy overall. Out of date processes are still the stuff that makes the nations collapse, and Italy will not be a collapsing nation. Young men to run a young empire. Good. Less than 10 billion in debt? I mean, Italian economics so far, not looking too bad, I would say. Alright, keep Italia strong. Queen of the battlefield. I do like that political power, so... Let's go and do that one. While well, the last war proved the superiority of armored forces, 20 years have passed, and new tactics have emerged to negate the power of the tanks. Also, our own empire provides, approves, a hostile ground for tanks. Uh, from the Alps to the Al Alpenini and the Balkans, from the Libyan desert to Ethiopia's canyons, are very home that makes it almost impossible for tanks to deploy in large numbers. While well, armored divisions are and always will be part of the Regio Esercito, infantry should be the main focus of our reforms and occupy the central role in our future army. Oh, there goes the Jewish uh, one, Vituska. Vituska wins in Ostland. Oh boy. Oh boy. So all I can say is oh boy. So it's 8.55. That's not bad. Yeah, after this, I mean, we can keep slashing military spending. Ooh, is there anything we can do here? Well, that's Central European Council is not looking too bad. Republic of Ukraine. Uh, it's still 30%. Do we have to change this at all? Hmm. I would love to do reforms, but. There's nothing we can do. We want Borghese, I believe. Because this get, we have reform points for it. So. Funnel black shirts to the army, huh? Alright. <sighs> I feel so limited by what I can do. Big sadness. And the next week will be done within two, or around two weeks-ish. So, Infantry, Queen of the Battlefield. Look to the SAF. Banned from service. So we gotta do the other stuff on the left side of the tree before we can do this, so. Uh, what should we do here? Expand the black shirt divisions. More modern path. The heroes of fascism. Not bad. 364 days. Happy Xmas. Happy Xmas, everyone. Huh. Alright. Renovating the... Wait. Renovating the land. What is... Well, we can close this for now. Oh, renovating the land. Ah, building... Get a building slot. That's nice. Uh, testing in progress, 30%. The Battle of Barcelona, okay. Yes. Nothing done there, okay, okay, okay. Oh, there we go. Boost it back up, boost it back up. Infantry, anti-tank, very good, very good. 65, we could do this. I don't want to do it just because that requires something else that we have to build, and I don't want to build anymore, so. Special Forces, let's go ahead and do this one. All right. Oh, even more political power? Air... Ah, we are doing air doctor stuff now. It might be best to do that one. The Regia Aeronautica is the most recent independent branch of the army, having detached itself from the autonomous section of the army and navy at the end of the Great War. With about 50 years of independent service, there's much more room for improvements in both organization and equipment. And Arduce has great plans for the Air Force with the aim of making it capable of holding their figurative ground against Luftwaffe itself, which we might have to do eventually, seeing as, uh... Germany, well, they're led by the fat man. We don't like the fat man over there. We gotta test our work, of course. Pause it and survey for a project. You don't mind if we do? Six billion. Six sum. Six sum. And. Nice. Renovating land. How can we get another building slot, probably? Please let me click, please. Ah, Queen of the Battlefield. Death from above. Very good. And research will be done in two months. And that's looking okay. Yeah, we gotta look into that. Expand the black shirts. We'll probably have to do that one. Subvert the Calabiniri. Uh, more, this is a more conservative path. Freeze the funding. Oh, leader experience gains goes way down. More attack, though. Uh, hmm. Search for the corruption in the ranks. No evidence? Make some. Huh. 
Okay. So this will lead scores of downward conservative path. We're probably going to go down this way, lose political power, get more stability, get more political power and in the end, bring in his friends, a donation of army grade equipment. Like, oh, on our side. That's not bad. Um, destroy them and de drown them in destroyers. Wow. Uh, a producerous navy. Wow, that does not look good. Our national debt go go down by two billion. Huh. Okay. Well. Hmm. There's a lot of things we can do here. I'm not sure they're good though. <laughs> I'm really not sure they're worth doing. You know. Burdens of an empire doesn't seem very good for us. Well, I guess we can go down this one. We do get more political power, so federalize the PNF. The opposition to the party, if it can even be called that. As a transparent facade of a device meant to keep power, a product of a long-gone era, these silly parades are no longer needed to remain in control. However, they'll be entirely eliminated. However, there's uh, still a need for reform in the manner in which the seats are allocated. A federalization is needed. Each state, the map of which shall be drawn by the party, shall be entitled to representatives, meaning to grant the people of that region better representation. Of course, the officials shall all be chosen under the direct supervision of the upper echelons of the party, but such a system shall certainly create a significantly more convincing facade to the public. Cool. And maybe we'll get through with this. So, autocracy on the way to democracy. Oh, you get even more civilian factory construction speed. I love it. What is this in the party of 1919? That's oh, not bad, too. You get more civilian construction speed, too. I like that. As well as the masses want to be governed. That's not bad. I prefer... Discipline above all, that seems a little bit better. The party, oh wait, hold on, so that's a little different. If you do the party, it depends on what you choose, the party of 1919, the party of 1922, or the party of 1939. It changes what you get. Which overall, I wouldn't mind that one, but I mean, autocracy on the way to democracy is not bad. You get more civilian construction speed, more stability, a little bit more encryption. Not bad, you know, not bad. Military austerity, I don't think so, son. Less than five billion. We're doing really well. Maybe too well. But we must federalize to get a little bit more political power. Because right now we're minus 0.44 still, which is not very good. But look at that. Oh my goodness. 106.1, 0.8, whatever it was. About a month left for that. How are our weaponry? Our weapons. Main battle tanks could use a little bit more work. Anti tank is looking pretty good. Artillery is looking not too bad either. So can we edit these infantry? Oh, we're not even making divisions. Um, That's okay, because that, that costs more money. 20 combo width is okay. It's not great. Ooh, artillery. We already have artillery. Support equipment's more than fine. Logistics, field hospitals might be really good to invest in here for infantry. Yeah, maybe. Hmm. Recon. If I want to go to use recon, I'll use main battle tanks for recon. That gives you a lot of armor, though. It's, it's, it costs so much. So much armor. I'm going to do it anyways. We need way more tanks for this, though. Haha. <laughs> And we'll probably need, what, like 200 tanks? 600? Eh, that was close. Not really. Tankarinos. There you go. Go down to 2. Go down to 3. Go down to 2. That should be good enough. Go to 5. There you go. Cool. Got the reserves. Alright, what is this one? Lose more political power? Nah, I'm good. Control the... No, we lose more political power. Uh, we'll choose this one then, but we lose stability. Oh, oh my goodness. Why does everything... Let me lose stability or political power? Or, or we'll reform this. If we go down this way, we've got to reform stuff as fast as possible. So I guess we'll reform the OVRA. Some may call it treason, but the critics of the OVRA are correct in their assessment. Why should we continue to tolerate a bloated, repressive, and corrupt institution that has no accountability to the PNF and the Italian people? Scores will transform the OVRA, cutting the fat and retooling it to combat the threats that the Italian people face today, not the threats they faced decades ago. Hmm. Yeah, that's not good. Poverty rate is... It actually could be worse. It actually could be a lot worse. We have a one-year draft, no unemployment subsidies, trinket minimum wage, low min income weighted, medium taxation, a civilian budget boost, of course, helps us out. Standardized bombing formations are not bad. Let's go with this. We'll also go with this. Not bad, not bad. Hmm. I mean, three and a half billion in terms of debt. Okay, so how fast is that? That's, that's pretty fast. Reshuffle the priorities. Sure. Anyone who hasn't been living under a rock for the past two decades can see that communism and liberalism are no longer serious threats to the stability of Italy. However, despite fascism's triumph over these two ideologies, the OVRA still operates as if they are clear and present danger. Indonesian War. Scorza understands that this absurdity must end. 
The greatest threats to Italy are not subversive ideologies, but the yawning chasm of dysfunction, corruption, and self-interest that plagues the PNF and the institutions of the Italian state. Scores will refocus the OVRA to clamp down on the rot that festers inside Italy, lest it undoes everything fascism has built. Oh, 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 so maybe we got some stability from doing this one earlier. Yeah, we got 20% more, so that helps it out. Uh, to do this one, we have to get the crown and the court, and the bankers and industrialists. We've got to do both of these, so we'll boom, 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 boom. Corruption in the PNF. More stability is not bad. Follow the money. What do corruption? The anarchists that Mussolini once associated with were right when they said that power begets parasites. In the years since their triumph over the decadent Western empires, the PNF and its complacency has become no different from the corrupt bourgeois parliamentarians that it overthrew. Bribery, graft, and other forms of political profiteering are commonplace. Many of its members view their membership in the party as a means to advance their personal interests and not as service to the Italian nation. This rot is undermining the Italian people's confidence in the fascist project and the PNF's authority. And if not checked, it will transform Italy into a mirror of the German Reich to save the PNF from itself. Scores up will authorize the OVRA to conduct a thorough investigation into corruption in the party. The leeches that have made a mockery of Mussolini's vision will be found and brought to justice one way or another. Which, we, yeah, we lose some fascism support. Don't really care. But we do get 2% more stability, which will help us out with, you know, the issues that are plaguing us right now, even though, oh my goodness, 0.32, that could be worse. It's a little better than what we had before, but oh, that's fine with me. And we have about 9 days left, which is totally fine. Which, uh, why not read the next one? Follow the money. One of the hallmarks of fascist policy is the emphasis on a partisanship a partnership between the government and the private sector for the benefit of the nation as a whole. However, while public-private collaborations brought us victory, stability, and prosperity, it has also had predictable consequences for the Italian government. Over the decades, a seedy network of shady transactions and dark monies enabled special interests to possess vast influence over the state. The web of the corruption stretches from the highest ministers to the lowest clerks, and dismantling it will be a tall order. There is no question that it must be done. Scores that will authorize the OVRA to follow the strands of the web. How hopeful. They will find the root of the corruption. Yes, root out the corruption as best as you possibly can. The country depends on you. Over here, we should come to uh, scatter helicopters. Why not? I do like that about, you know, um, when you get the new research or new stuff there, you it's usually at the top of the list when you open the thing up. So we must follow the money once we do some civilian budget stuff. Oh, National Protection Alliance, huh? Corruption in the PNF, and then follow Le Monet. As you can tell, this episode is quite a bit longer than normal. Uh, I am trying to push this just a little bit further ahead, make a few less episodes, maybe one less episode, just so we can move a little bit faster. A little bit faster, please. Hmm. There was one comment, actually a few comments, saying that I couldn't send volunteers to the Levant just because I was at war with Croatia. You guys were right about that, so. Oh well. The Palestinian Arab state. Well, less than a billion. Constructing. Oh, yes! Oh, yes! Look at the Italian economy humming. It's humming so well, we're starting to build in our uh, puppets, too. Follow the money. The crown of the court, the Italian monarchy, is one of the institutions that has been spared from fascism's creeping influence for decades. It has isolated itself from our revolution and yet remains beloved in the eyes of the Italian people. It is for this reason that scores it a desires to investigate it. Who knows what skeletons lie on the king and the couriers in his courier's closets? The OVRA will uncover the crown's dirty secrets and, if needed, use them to gain much needed leverage over it. I do love a good, dirty secret. Unless it gets me in legal trouble, then I don't want to know about it, please. Oh, what can we do here? Survey, oh yes, survey for Paul Jeff. Yes, please, thank you. Ah, uh, very good, very good. Yeah, not, really not bad. As long as you remain in your means of budgeting, we'll be okay. The WRRF unifies all Russia. Good job, guys. We must follow the money, though. The crown in the court. Very good. Research will be done within six days, so I'm not even going to read until that one's done is fine, so it makes it that one this look just slightly better. So, after advanced special forces, it's only 65 still. Air assault? Oh yeah, let's go do that one. Alright, my friends, and Indonesia's defeated free Indonesia. The bankers and the industrialists. At last, our investigation has yielded fruit. On Scorsese's desk lies pages and pages of financiers, industrialists, and other notables that have spread their tentacles into the state. In some cases, entire enterprises have taken part in corrupt dealings. Scorza will put an end to this. On his orders, hundreds of bankers and industrialists who have corrupted Italy will be arrested and brought to trial. Let this be a reminder that the state must rule over the corporations and not the other way around. Heto pla Indonesia Raja. Very good. Uh, fund the project? Yeah, we probably want to do that very soon. 
funding the project is probably a pretty good idea. So let's go and do that. 36%. My goodness, it takes so long to do. The Gibraltar Dam will be done before we can do other stuff. We have 53 reform points, and we can't even use any of them. Oh, my goodness. And I want to get down here before we end this episode. I'm not sure what it says, but... Uh, Voluntaria per la represanion del antifascismo. After two decades of fascism, the Italian people are totally committed to a project. They do not need the tentacles of the OVRA to uphold the principles of fascism. Fascism will endure through the voluntary cooperation of the people, and the reformed OVRA will settle into its new role as a steward of fascism, but not as an enforcer. So we can get rid of this gosh darn really bad stability debuff. Oof, I hate it. And in 1965, the Italian Empire has no more debt. What nation can say that? No more debt. Oh, we need to test our work too. We have a, a lot. We don't have any political power. But we've got a, no more debt, which is great. Awesome, awesome. The legacy of the Starace. Reformed OVRA. We get more mobilization speed, stability period, and more decryption, which would be kind of nice. C C C C C C C C C. Huh. With every available method, huh? The communists and the traitors, indiscriminate terror. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And one day's left. Ah, there we go, my friends. But that's pretty much going to end this episode here. Uh, there's so many focuses here. And I, I want to focus a lot more on, you know, reforming ourselves, even though there's not much we can really do. But should we do create the CGLTA? And should we int introduce workplace democracy and or proprietary corporations and or allow independent parties as well as organic democracy, move towards socialization? Or do we choose reform trade unions in which we shall improve our multi-poverty, which is great, industrial expertise monthly change, and when eventually we can get work with economic barons, strengthen the IRI. Let me know in the comments below because there's just so much here in terms of choices. And I, I prefer to have give you guys some more choices as well. Uh, there's just there's just so much, even though we really do need to stay with the, more of the reformed path. So anything down here? Ooh, there's a new school. Eh, you know, let me know about this one too because we'll probably hit this in the next episode too because I'm going to make this a little bit longer. Promote imperial integration and encourage imperial cooperation. Oh my goodness. Which one would be better? Let me know in the comments below. But regardless, if you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow as we will try to continue to improve Italy and the Empire. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.